one of the best features of an interior cabin is you get to sleep late. It's nice and dark, so we, we have, right, we've slept late. Uh, now it's in time to, uh, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna try to grab a big chicken, and then there's a bar crawl we're gonna try to catch up for. Let's go do it. Of course, one of the challenges on a ship with almost 6,000 people is the, the elevators, right? Everybody wants to go up to big chicken, or down to dinner, and so on, so the elevators tend to take a little while. So we have kind of a narrow window to grab a bite to eat before that bar crawl. And I think I definitely want to grab a bite to eat. So instead of big chicken, I think I'm gonna to try to make my way back here to Guy's Pig and Anchor, uh, which appears to be open and has some really good barbecue. Well, this is gonna be mad at me, but uh, there's such a line to get on the elevator to get up to deck 16 where big chicken is. There is a huge line of folks back there at the uh, Guy's Pig and Anchor for the breakfast buffet. So I think the quickest breakfast is honestly gonna be right here at Emerald's Bistro. And shucks, I just might have to get some more shrimp and grits. We've got just a little bit of time. I think the bar crawl is supposed to begin at like 11. I know that's pretty early to start a bar crawl, but it is what it is. And there's a lot of bars on this ship. So Melissa is going to the, is at the gym this morning. Uh, and then I think she's also gonna do the fun of shore or fun abroad. She usually has a good time with those sort of things. And we'll show you some clips from there. In the meantime, I've got my coffee, so now, the day could begin. Good morning. So I got up this morning, did a little time in the gym, and then I just finished the Fun Ashore, Fun Aboard show. I had my ticket. Didn't win anything. I tried. Didn't win. If he's not there, tell us to leave. Anyway, now I am ready for some coffee and some breakfast. Let's go see what we can find. So I made it to Java Blue, and I got my iced cappuccino. And then I grabbed me a little breakfast sandwich. And look at this little fruit. Snacks. I'm gonna eat these in the room and then get ready to go for my day. Get up my makeup on. I've had my good workout. Did the fun show or fun aboard show, and now it is time to get ready to see what the rest of the day holds. Who knows what Brian's doing? We kind of separate on sea days because he likes one thing, I like another. So first stop was Tide's Bar. Next up, we're headed to a Red Frog Pub on the upper level on 17. I like this one because it has a great view of the whole pool area, uh, as well as of course on the sides. Oh, it's rough today. <laughs> from 17, from the Red Frog Pub on 17, I think we're going to head down to uh, the, uh, Havana. Uh, the Havana Bar. That's our group. <laughs> okay, so we finished up in Havana Bar, and now I think we're headed to the Marina Bar. Uh, it's right down the hall, uh, and uh, well, we'll see what they have. So far, this has been fun. I'm not exactly sure where Melissa is. I'm sure she's having a good time somewhere. Uh, we should sync up with her shortly. After eating my little breakfast and getting ready, I headed to Grand Central, where Lizzie from the Fun Squad and someone from the housekeeping team hosted a towel animal folding class. And I've never done this before. I've always wanted to, so it was so much fun. Unfortunately, I had an operator error with my microphone for this class, so I have no audio. So I'm just going to talk you through what we did and how much fun this was. I started out at a table. They gave us one regular size towel and then a small hand towel. I quickly found out that I needed way more room than this. So I crawled down on the floor so that I could use the floor as my folding area. During the towel making class, I learned to make a dog, which I think was my favorite of all the animals we made, especially the technique to, to make the body. It was really interesting. I think they use the same body for the monkey that you sometimes see in the rooms, and it's kind of neat how you make the body of the dog. But then we also made an elephant, and making his head and seeing how the towels fold over and turn into a elephant head, I thought that was, that was just really clever and cool how it how the shape shapes up. I really enjoyed this class way more than I thought I would. It was just a lot of fun. So if you ever see a chance to do a towel animal making class, you absolutely should try it as well. After I finished the towel animal making class, I went and found Brian and joined the bar crawl. All right, so our next stop, we've uh, finished at the Marina Bar. Now we're headed to Guy's Ping and Anchor. Let's go do it. All right, from Guy's Ping and Anchor, we're gonna head to, next is the watering hole. This has been fun. This is really the first time we've had a successful uh, bar crawl. What a good time. Great group, small group, uh, which I think really helps. So, a lot of fun. And, and, and Melissa's joined us. This is a super cool new feature they have. They've had these screens on Mardi Gras and Celebration, but on Jubilee, now you can control them from a little 
kiosk so you can choose what you want to do. Check this out. Catch the screen. Oh, a coastal mangrove. Press change and watch these screens. This is amazing. Oh, there's the mangrove. Okay. That is so cool. I love that you can change it, do whatever you want to see on there. From the Alchemy Bar. All right, let me ask, what is this called? Liquid, liquid purple. <laughs> Our little group is headed now to the Grand View Bar. I wasn't exactly sure what this one was, but it turns out this is on one of the, uh, the bar that overlooks the beautiful stage in the center of the ship. All right, well, we're here, but it might be a problem. Uh-oh. Now, from the casino bar on deck seven, uh, we're headed to our Doxter Inks. This is a brand new bar right here on Jubilee, uh, and it's on deck six. We're just gonna have one, right? And it's it's where um, it's where Latitudes is on Celebration. Uh, what we're gonna order? You gotta see this thing. It's incredible. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, so I like this. We are double teaming, making our drinks. Teamwork is teamwork. Is it live? Live. Live, all right. Let's go six now. Bang! One. Oh! Oh, let's go. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. The Platinum Throne. Nice. Platinum. Have I mentioned that yet? Hey, so Brian and Melissa are bringing you the best videos. Like and subscribe hey. for more. Carnival Jubilee, honestly, a great cruise. You got to try it. Try it out, guys. At Golden Mermaid, I keep on to say Golden Jubilee. At Golden Mermaid, we had a beautiful pearl bubble. And it was similar to the one we had at Dr. Inks, but it was great. Oh man, they brought them over to the table, they blew the smoke on them, and then let us pop them with, uh, with like peppermint. It was so cool. But this is the best bar crawl group ever. All right, I like y'all, but I love some big chicken. We gotta go. Something I've always wanted to do before is Banzai Teppanyaki. We've never done it before. It's it's elegant night. We didn't feel like getting super dressed up. So we made reservations for Banzai Teppanyaki. We're gonna try it and see how it is. I won't get to record a whole lot in there. It's gonna be really hard. So we will let you know how it is when we're done. Time for some teppanyaki. Filet and shrimp, what are you having? All right, so we never got to recap how dinner was last night, so we thought we would revisit here at Tepidyaki and let you know it was amazing. The show was amazing, the food was amazing, everything was just great. Our chef, he was fun, did all kinds of craziness with the, with the food and, and made the little volcano and just all the things you, you expect from Tepidyaki, and he was hilarious. There was so many courses, the appetizers, there was tuna and there was a pork belly, just a few little bites, and gosh, it was delicious. It got the meal started great. And then I had the filet and the shrimp, and it was cooked per perfect. Um, Brian had filet and chicken. His was good too. Lots of fried rice, you know, kind of what you expect, but the service was great. We just really had a great experience. I'm glad we did it because we haven't done it in the past and we've always wanted to. So happy we, we actually tried it this time. Teppanyaki it was so good. Just like Melissa said, but there's a, a ton of food. It was so, so much. If you love tep teppanyaki at home, you're going to love it here on the ship. I thought for uh, for for 49, 49 bucks or so, I, th I thought it was a pretty good deal. So I think all said and done, we were in for about a hundred dollars for dinner, which is about what you would pay at a, at a high end teppanyaki at home. So it was an enjoyable experience. We had a great you know great time talking to our, our neighbors at the table. Uh, the service was of course excellent, uh, and again, it was a lot a lot of food. My goodness, that's probably why we didn't record afterwards because we were just like completely full. Couldn't do anything else. Mm -hmm.